In this After Effects tutorial, we are going to expand upon our previous motion tracking lesson by attaching our instant message to a phone and using two-point tracker instead of a single-point tracker. In our last tutorial, which you can find a link somewhere on this page, we did a single-point track and we attached an instant message uh, exchange to a phone, which is very typical of what you're going to see on many television shows today. This shot, however, it's the same situation with the boy here picking up the phone and looking at the message. The difference is the last time we had a dolly shot and we were able to do a single point track. This time the camera is slowly pushing in onto the subject and because of that the scale of the phone is changing over time and we want to make sure that the text message also scales with that phone. We're going to do this with a two point tracker or a multi point tracker and it's basically the same as before. We're going to start with our video clip. Well, not that video clip. With this video clip, and if we take a look at it, we can see that we do have some in and out points set. Or maybe we don't. This is actually a project that was brought in from uh, Adobe Premiere, part of the linking process. I think we need to go right to there and we'll set an out point there just to make sure that we have that set. So if you haven't ever checked out dynamic linking between Adobe After Effects and Adobe Premiere, it is really great. So this is a project that was brought in from Adobe Premiere, but I'm just going to click on my clip and I'm going to drag it down onto the create new uh, composition icon and release. We have a composition now that includes footage that is the same size and duration as the clip that we have selected. I'm going to go ahead and resize this just a little bit so we can see everything that is in the screen. And let us go ahead and switch over to our tracker panel. Again, if you don't have your tracker panel available, you can go up to Window and Tracker, and then it should pop up. And this time, let's scrub down to when he picks up the phone and when he first sees the message somewhere, probably right about there. And this time we are going to Track Motion will of course bring up our I'm just going to close this composition window down it brings up our layer window and this time in our tracker panel instead of just tracking position let us also track scale and when we do that you will notice that in our uh, layer window we now have two trackers instead of one the boxes are the same. We have our feature region, we have our search region, we have our attach points. They all work just like they did in the last tutorial. So I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to drag the uh, feature region for the first box. Just scale it in. Then I'm going to adjust the size of the search region. Now one thing to kind of keep in mind is this line in between our two boxes. Notice the line, this little arrow, is pointing left to right. This is letting us know that if we were doing the rotation property, this attach point will serve as our origin, right? So uh, the more that the tracker 2 moves, it will use that to calculate the rotation, and we'll use this attach point as that uh, center of rotation going forward. So it looks like I've got the feature region and the search region for this first tracker selected and we're going to do once again move our attach point there and then for this second search box the feature region I'm going to go with this highlight on the corner of the of the phone in a nice contrasty area I do want to make sure though that you know, this blue area, it's got a lot of little white dots in it, which could cause some problems. So we're going to have to watch this very carefully as we go through this track. But basically, I'm going to set these two points where I want them. That looks pretty good. One kind of thing that you can do, especially if you're dealing with rotation, and I know we're dealing with scale here. But if you are dealing with rotation, you're going to want to find two track regions that are on the same plane with one another. Uh, that way you can keep everything as flat as possible. I think we're okay right here. Uh, let's go back to 
yeah, I think we're going to just start our track right there. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit in case this track goes wonky. And let us track forward. Again, it looks like we're doing okay. If yours goes out of sync like that one did right there, all we have to do is stop it. And we're going to back our current time indicator back to the last good position. We can just reposition what's going on from here to here. Oh, it just moves really fast. So I'm just going to increase the size of my search region. Oops, I don't want to move that part. Just want to move this part. Perhaps. Nope. You can always hit undo if you make a mistake with that. But I just want this box right here. Let's just uh, increase the size a little bit. And when we're satisfied, let us just track forward. I'll zoom out so we can see if it messes up again. And there we go. So again, if you start to lose the track, back it up to the last known good location, and then start your track all over again. Well, not all over, but just from that last good good point. I think we've I think we've got it. I think it's I think it's there. I'm gonna back this up. And go back over to our composition. Whoops. Just go ahead and close the layer window for the moment. And we need to add a null object because, again, if we have to do any adjustment to our text message layer, it's better to not have it have a million keyframes. So we're going to use the null object, a nothing object. I'm going to put that in our in our in our panel, and we'll just go back over here, and we'll go to our target, edit our target, and we want to make sure that the target is set to our null one. We'll hit OK, and then we will apply this tracking data to the X and Y values. And we'll hit OK, and there we go. We have our null object. I know it's a little hard to see because it's this light red, but it's there, and sure enough, it is tracking along perfectly. So with the track looking good, let's go ahead and drag our text message into our composition. I'm just going to drag and drop it right there at the current time indicator. Perhaps. <laughs> there it goes. When you see the blue, see that blue line? That means that you're dropping that new layer or that new element right into the timeline at that current time indicator. We'll release. I have to back up just maybe a little bit. There's one frame. If we scrub through now, we can see that it's not attached. We can fix that very easily by parenting it to the null object. So if you don't have your parent, if you don't have your parent column visible, make sure you go down to your toggle switches and modes, and then that should pop up. Or you can right click and go to columns, and bring up the parent column. All right, and then I'm just going to parent it to our null object. Again, now we can start playing through this. We can see that. Sure enough, this is scaling incorrectly, but the text message isn't in the right spot. And if you remember our discussion about the parent-child relationship, while the parent controls the child, in this case the null object is telling the text message layer, hey, come along, we're scaling in, we're moving this way, we're moving up, we're moving down, we're moving left. The child, the text message layer, is still independent. So we can go into the position value, we can drag this over to the left side of the screen. And we can see it still moves and follows and does all the cool things. And yes, there is a little bit of a scale going on, which is what we want because we're pushing in on this shot. But maybe we want this just a little bigger. Let's zoom back out. 
we've got a lot of space going on. In fact, let me just fit this up to the full screen. So I'm going to select the text message layer, hit the S key to bring up scale, and let's, uh, let's double the size of this. Reposition it. And then take a look at what we have. There we go. That looks so much better. It scales correctly. It moves correctly. It does everything that we need it to do. And we have a very successful track, a multi-point track, two points. One that is tracking motion, another one that is uh, tracking scale and rotation, although we really didn't track rotation in this example. We could, it would have followed the exact same principles. The only difference would be that the instant message would be rocking back and forth as he moves that phone around. Probably not something that we want in this particular example, but you could try it yourself and see what you come up with. Very simple. That's your After Effects tutorial. If you have any questions, use the comment section. Like and subscribe, all of that good stuff. And uh, we'll be back to talk about three-point tracking or 3D tracking very soon. Thanks for watching.